So we're going to next jump into what Kramer's rule will tell us about how we can use the determinants in a useful way. So, so far we've just got the definition of what a determinant is and then how to use it is coming with something called Kramer's rule. Okay, so I need you to write this down when you have, this is just uh, a system of equations in two variables. AX plus BY equals C, AX plus BY equals C, both in standard form. So when you have an equation in standard form and another one in standard form, we can use the coefficients and we can use determinants in order to solve it. Yes. Yes, they're sub, yeah, subscripts, A1 and B1 and C1 and A2 and B2 and C2. The only reason we have them like that is because there's two. And when I show you what's happening for Kramer's rule, you need to know which one goes with which equation. So we've got these two. These are really um, just a good shortcut method of how you can solve uh, systems and two variables without a calculator, with all kinds of math that you can do pretty easily if you know what to do with those numbers that are the coefficients. Okay, so what I want you to notice first is that you have this little group of, of numbers that are right here. You have two numbers here and two numbers here. Those are going to turn out in Kramer's rule to be the denominator of our solution for x, but also our solution for y. So what you're first noticing right here, and I want you to write it down, is that to solve for x, Kramer's rule is going to tell us to take these coefficients and find their determinant, and that will be the denominator of your answer. Okay, everybody make sure that you are looking up right now, or this next part is going to make no sense. Okay, so right in here, we're going to have a, a determinant also in the numerator. Since we're solving for x, it was figured out a long time ago that if you put these two numbers in the x spot and keep your b's in the y spot and use determinants, that you're going to find the answer for what x is. Okay. So you've got your C numbers here in the X spots. You've got your B numbers here in the Y spots. This is definitely not something someone's going to figure out off the top of their head if they're not paying attention. So I need everybody's heads up. I need everybody paying attention. OK, so C, the C's come here for the X's. The Y's are done similarly. It's still going to keep the same denominator. But for solving for Y, the A coefficients are used, but the things that are in the Y spot are the C's. Solving the uh, systems of, any, of equations. And we've already talked about and seen various different times where you have systems of equations. And so the solutions can be used in real world applications. This is just a method of doing it if somebody, for whatever reason, was trying to get this, this answer just fairly quickly without a calculator, they didn't have one handy, and in the pressure, pressure of the situation, they could come up with an answer for something like this. So we have our Kramer's rule says that you can take the determinant for the denominator out of these things and then the numerator by replacing the x's with c's here and the y's with c's here. So what we need is we need an example to show what this is, how this works out. And when you see the amount of work that goes into it, it really, it's less work than solving by row operations. It's sometimes less work than, than solving by elimination or substitution. It's just a matter of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Am I trying to accomplish with a calculator or without a calculator? Or am I trying to accomplish this um, in this specific way? So we want to set up our numbers here. 
What numbers are going to go in the determinants for the denominators, for both the x and the y? What numbers? Three? Three will go here. What will go here? Negative two, Negative two four, and five. So for both x's and the y's, we're putting three, negative two, four, and five in the denominators. All right, I'll cover that up so that nobody's overwhelmed. Three, negative two, four, and five. The numbers come straight from here. In the numerator, for the x, what numbers go here for solving for the x one? And? 10 and negative 3, and then over here we get, oops, negative 2 and 5. 10 and negative 3, because we're solving for x, and negative 2 and 5 stays the same. So over here, what's different? Swap, sort of swap. So where's the 10 and negative 3 go? On the right this time. And then what goes in the other spot? Three and four. Three and four. Okay. Where do I lose you? The numerators. Okay, so notice that here, that's where the x coefficients were in the denominator. But since we're solving for x, you pull the x coefficients from these numbers over here. And, and the, the 2 and negative 5 come from the same spot as the 2 and negative 5 came from. Okay, good. Yes. It's 4.6, yeah. So what we need to do then is you need to take and you need to solve the determinants. So swirling down around like that we've done, this would be 10 times 5 minus negative 2 times 3. And the denominator would be 3 times 5 minus negative 2 times 4. And so let's just look at that a little bit at a time. We are getting a really nasty fraction, but it's the easiest way to get the nasty fraction. Okay? So here, 10 times 5. 50 minus 6, and that gives you 44. So without too much trouble, 50 minus 6 gives you 44. Without too much trouble, 15 minus negative 8, which is plus 8, which gives you 23. So our x value without really having to do a whole lot of work. This is all mental math. You can multiply, you know, you can do this pretty easy. We get this fraction, 44 20 thirds, which by the other methods would be really kind of difficult to find. So 44 20 thirds. And then the other one, determinant for the numerator, determinant for the denominator. So this one would be When we're solving this one would be negative minus 40. Because it's always minus when you're doing the determinants of a 2 by 2 matrix. It's this one, multiply this way, minus this way. Multiply this way, yay, light bulb's coming on. Multiply this one, and then minus this one. So we get. 15 minus, it's the same. Quite honestly, once you've found the denominator for 1, do you have to redo that work? No, because it's the same for the denominator for the other one. So our two answers there, 44 20 thirds, negative 49 20 thirds, found with a pretty simple method. It's a lot less stressful, a lot less writing. Um, than some of the others. The thing that I don't like about it is it's pretty mindless. In other words, if you can put the numbers in the right space, you really have, 
you really don't have to have any idea what it is that you are solving for and what it means, which is really what I don't like about Kramer's rule. But what I do like about it is that it's not so terrible and difficult to solve. I'm sorry? It's good for you, sort of, yeah, because it's easy to do. Two by twos are very nice like that. Three by threes, not really quite so nice, okay? Three by threes, even though the, the calculation work is easy, it's just there's so many little numbers to calculate, they just get annoying. And so... Anybody who's listening on YouTube or whatever, yes, I said that it's annoying, and it really is, but it's a good way of solving if you have nothing, no other way to do it. All right. Oops. Go back. All right. Just for a second. Sure. Yep. And three by threes is to be announced as far as whether you'd want to do it this way or not. All right, cool. So three by th the three variable equations, instead of one, two, th you, we've got one, two, three of them this way. So write this down like this. This one takes a little bit longer to write than it does to actually do. Um, and once you under since you understand the two by twos, it's going to make more sense. It's going to take longer to write it than to understand what you're writing. But our denominators in this case, and this is where finding a denominator once is going to be helpful, the denominators are these coefficients all together, but it's in a 3 by 3 matrix. And we saw that that one just takes a bit longer to solve. So our denominators for x and for y and for z are all going to match they're the A and the B and the C coefficients. These and these and these. So knowing what you knew before, for the X's, you're going to replace which row with D1, D2, D3? Row 1 or row 2 or row 3? if you want to solve for the x's. One. Row 1 is going to get replaced with the d's. For solving for y, which row is going to get replaced with the d's? Two. Row 2. And for this one, you're going to be replacing row 3 with the d's. It's the numerators and the denominators will match, except for 1, two, three. So it's really pretty logical as far as how that goes. And I'll just give you a heads up right now. Whenever you're trying to solve one of these, you're always going to want to try to solve denominators first because every so often you'll get one that Kramer's rule doesn't work for, and that's one if you get a zero in the denominator. So you don't want to go through all that work if the denominator is going to fall apart anyway. So you've got to do your denominator first, and then you've got other methods that you can fall back on if you need to. So we're going to do this one in phases. We're going to solve for x, and then y, and then z. So we're going to get the problem right now. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. This is going to stay here. This is going to stay here. What I would like you to do for the, for the next thing, guys, what I would like you to do for, rather than write your fingers off, I would like you to pay attention for the next few slides. Just watch what happens, okay? Just watch what happens. You'll get a chance to practice it, but I want you to watch. Usually I want you to write. This time I want you to watch. Okay. So we have this. Here is your, here is your template that you're using. You have 1, 1, negative 1, 2. So for this thing, when we set up to solve for x, 
Okay, we put in our numbers from our denominator. 1, 1, negative 1. 2, negative 1, 1. 1, negative 2, 3. And then afterwards, you could move closer if you like. Afterwards, what we would do is we would replace this first column. You're going to replace it with these numbers. So that you have that. Okay. So once we have that, we can solve the numerator and denominator by minors. Okay. So in other words, we take, we take this number times this block, this number times this block, then minus, it's always going to be minus, this number times these two, this number times these two, and then plus this bottom number times these two, this bottom number times these two. Okay? Once you have these numbers set out, then it's going to be negative 2 times multiply this one minus this one. Negative 5 times multiply this one minus this one. So it does take some time to get through. Okay? But when we do that, negative 2 times this one minus this one. 5 times this one minus this one. 4 times this one minus this one. And then putting your numbers together, we end up with 7 over negative 3, negative 7 thirds. That one's done. Great thing about it is our negative 3 is solved for, so you wouldn't have to do that again if you were doing the next one. So once again, I want you watching.